What is up, comic creators? Peter here. I recently made a video on editing iMovie audio and all the aspects of beginning in that uh, field of editing uh, audio through iMovie, all the basics, and it's doing really well. And so I figured I'd follow up with that video on how to do uh, or how to edit video within iMovie. Uh, so that way you have your video and then you have your audio. So that's what we're going to go ahead and get started on now. Um, and so without uh, any more waste of time, let's go ahead and get into it on how to edit video or giving a basic rundown of all the things you can do within iMovie uh, to edit video within that platform, within that software. And, um, you know, a lot of this stuff, uh, I think most people don't even realize you can do. So let's go ahead and pull up iMovie. And then I already have my project open, but the first thing that you're going to see when you open up iMovie is you're going to come into the uh, blank menu part of iMovie where you'll have all your previous projects. So if you're just just starting out, you click create new and you click create iMovie, but I'm going to go ahead and go right in here and start here. So now when you're importing videos, I already have my videos actually imported in here. They'll fall within the uh, project media file. Um, but if you need to actually put videos within to the project, um, you can do that one of two ways. You can just go through your regular finder and you can click on the video files or project files and you can actually drag them into the timeline of iMovie. Uh, or um, the other option you can do is actually go up to the top um, of your left hand side of your screen, click on file and then click on import media and that will actually import the media into your project right here as we see and then from there you can drag it into your timeline for iMovie to begin editing. So one of the things you'll notice right away, especially if you have a really long project like mine, like my video clip here is 16 minutes long, is it's so small. It's so small you can uh, barely see it. So this little bar here on your right hand side allows you to zoom into your project and get a better view of your video clip and you can zoom in very very far in order to uh, kind of better see and get a close eye on what you're trying to edit like if you're trying to detach audio or anything like that so uh, as you see if you've captured audio and video on the same recording device the audio is automatically in your video file you can actually detach the audio by right clicking and clicking detach audio on your mouse and that automatically separates the audio and video command Z to you know uh, redo or undo that function and then if you're if you don't have the right hand click function if you click edit in the top left hand corner you'll see the option to detach aud or, I'm sorry not edit modify dear lord what is wrong with me modify uh, and then you will click on detach audio and that will um, detach the audio right there and then command Z to undo everything command Z um, is your go-to uh, if you mess up in your project no matter what colossal mistake you've made command Z uh, that prompt will rescue you every time. In fact, that's a good segue into the various different command functions. Um, so a big thing is when you're working in iMovie, if you can learn your command functions, that is going to save you tons of time and will help you go faster with editing your projects. And so I cannot strongly recommend enough that you learn your command functions. And that's with any editing platform. Like I, right now, I primarily use Adobe Premiere and I know all the command functions there. They are different from iMovie uh, and that just speeds up the editing process. So I'm not constantly having to like click on edit and do all these different things. I can just command whatever and it does the command function for me. So uh, command Z is the, the undo function. Like I said, that will save your life. If you want to split a clip like this, you just move your cursor over to where you want to split it. Um, and then once the cursor is sitting on the part that you want to split, you just click uh, Command B um, and that will split the clip. But up here in Edit, you can see all the command functions for the different things you can do to the clip. So if you're trying to learn your command functions, this is where you want to go. You can see the cut, copy, paste, and then it shows you the command function. So split the clip, Command B, will split the clip and now we've got the clip split in two and I can move the other clip around. I can put it on top of the other one, you know, do whatever I need to do. And then like I said, if you, oh no, I made a mistake. I didn't want to split there. You just click command Z and that will redo or take back, sorry, undo um, all the things that um, you just did. And so uh, that's your saving grace right there. <laughs> All right, so let's say that you want to take out a section of your video, right? So if you click Command-B on one section, then you click uh, Command-B on the other, now you've created this separate clip um, that just got separated from the rest of your timeline, and then you click Command-X, which will uh, delete it 
from your timeline completely. And then obviously, you know, you have your you know, Command Z to take it back. And you can do all this functionality right from the edit section in the top left hand corner as well. You know, you would just move your cursor to the start and of the clip that you want to separate and then you move it to the end of the clip you want to separate. And then you split those two parts and then you just highlight the clip in the center that uh, you're taking out and you Command X and gets rid of it. Now, and that is how you can, you know, take out mistakes and, you know, edit out things you don't want in there and all those kinds of things. But you can also use the arrow keys, the up and down arrow keys on your keypad to automatically move your cursors to spaces within your time frame that have been split. So if you're trying to search for something or you lose track of it, you can just bounce around your time frame real fast. Um, you can also highlight the clip that you've split and you click Command C, which copies it, and then Command V, which pastes it. So now I've got these two clips that are uh, the exact same of each other. Um, so Command C to copy, Command V to paste, and now I can take one clip and move it on top of the other um, and um, you know do various different things with it. That's actually a good point, actually reminding myself there, that iMovie doesn't allow you to do more than just two layers within the project. And so a lot of times when I was working with like green screen, um, I couldn't do like you know, a layer of my green screen and then a layer of me and then add on another layer of a clip. Uh, it just wouldn't allow me to do it. So uh, I'd have to export the project with once the green screen is fixed and then re-import it back into iMovie and add all the other layers like pictures and other stuff afterwards. It's very frustrating. Whereas like Adobe Premiere or one of those higher end softwares allows you to do multiple layers of clips. iMovie, for whatever reason, only allows you to do two. But uh, you can move clips on top of it and now what you see in this uh, what we're seeing here is that clip is actually overtaking the layer on the bottom so whatever's on the top will automatically overtake uh, what's on the bottom within iMovie unless you edit it which we can do so within iMovie when you have a clip selected like we have this clip selected in the top right hand corner you actually have this menu bar of uh, various different things that you can do to the clip and alter it to, to alter it and that's any clip the clip on the top layer the clip on the bottom layer so if i click on this little box here you can see it's set to ken burns we can set it to fit to where it's taking up the entire page and then if i go to the two boxes in the front and i click down on that drop menu now i've got picture and picture it automatically makes it smaller and i can move it around the screen and as you can see here now i can actually have a video like when you see one of those gamer channels where they have that box in the bottom uh, left or right hand corner and they have the game streaming and them talking in the small corner that's how you do that with an iMovie um, and then you know obviously you would just have the video clip of you talking on the top layer and then the clip of you playing a video game or watching something on the bottom layer and so that's how you see all those silly little like react videos and you can alter the size of it you can uh, set it to where the dissolve rate doesn't just dissolve it like weirdly it just kind of like pops into frame or if you like the dissolve you can um, you know and you can just stretch it out and then you can also do that with clips now you'll notice when we first added this in it automatically made the clip take up the full page and it's kind of doing this weird motion where it's like going from top to bottom that's because it's automatically setting it to Ken Burns when you have a still image in there so you click on that box again and you see it has it starting at the top and then ending at the bottom that's what Ken Burns is that causes that movement across the page so you just switch that to fit and now it's taking up like the whole page so you click on those boxes again and uh, you'll go as you can see here it's taking up the whole page you'll go click on the boxes and then click the drop down menu and click picture in picture and that changes it to a little picture there that you can see and then you can move it around you can enhance the size of it and just like before, you can alter the dissolve rate or how it fades into the screen. You can make it just kind of pop into screen, which is normally how it, those people that have those images in there, that's how it happens on YouTube. It kind of just pops in, but it has these like different silly things you can do with it. It's, um, you can do multiple different things to have it come on screen, you know, you have to kind of zoom in from off camera. You can alter the frame rate on it. Like I had it to zero, so it kind of popped in, but if I set it to 0.5, it just kind of like zooms in like that. Um, but yeah, that gives you the ability to edit that and have that clip in there. Is your head spinning yet? <laughs> it's a lot of information. So we're about nine minutes in, but we're going to keep going. I want to show you a few more things that you can do with video. So this top menu bar here allows you to do other effects to your video. So you would just select the clip that you want to edit. 
um, and then you can do things like crop it. You can click on the box up here and you click that box and that opens up a menu and right now it's set to fit, but you can set it to uh, Ken Burns. You can do all sorts of stuff to it so we can actually crop it and then you can see these little arrows that pop up around it and then you click on one of the arrows and drag it and it kind of fills in what part you want to crop it to. So then you kind of adjust it, click the check mark and boom, now you're video clip has been cropped and you kind of have uh, zoomed in to a specific part of your clip. And so uh, this is really good for jump cuts. I just command Z back to where we were. So let's say you wanted to crop in on a certain part of your video. You could command B and split the clip um, and kind of highlight a section of what you want to crop. So like we did here, we have this clip here. Um, and let's say we have these two clips bouncing back and forth. So as it plays right now, what you're going to see is that eventually there's this like jagger cut. It just kind of cuts and your film just kind of like twitches a little bit. It almost looks like, right? Well, if you use, uh, if you utilize jump cuts, uh, you can edit your video and have a jump cut where you kind of zoom in slightly and it kind of almost erases uh, the fact that you actually edited something out. So let's say you made a mistake. We don't need these. Let's say you made a mistake and you were editing your clip and you're like, oh man, I made a mistake while I was recording and you wanted to take it out in post. Uh, you can move your cursor over to the section of the video that you want to take out. Uh, or if you want to crop it, you can move it over and, you know, kind of splice it to crop a certain part of the video like I did here. And then what I'll do is I'll go up to the menu bar, click those boxes again, click crop to fill and then adjust the crop there. And as you can see, now I've got it kind of zooming in slightly. Adjust this a bit. I'm just being picky at this point, but who cares, we're already in this. So now I've got it cropped. So now if I go back to the clip and let's say I wanna kind of make a smooth transition, I'll go ahead and play it. Um, and then as you'll see, as it's playing, we'll go ahead and crop this to fit. And boom, see? And it kind of just looks like uh, there was no mistake there. It just kind of did a quick zoom in and the video keeps playing and you can't really tell that I actually cut out a section of the video. It's uh, really good if you're editing your videos, it makes it nice and smooth. And then on the back end too, it just kind of crops and feels natural. It doesn't feel like, you know, uh, there's something missing. So great aspect, great functionality in there uh, to help you in your editing process. All right, let's get a little silly here. So we can also utilize the uh, Ken Burns aspect. So you have a clip here that I've spliced out so you have it cut on the start and end. Click on the box, click Ken Burns, and now you have the start point and you have an end point. So the start point starts where the clip starts, like where it's, where it's cut on your timeline. So it's cut right there, so that's where it'll start. And then the end point, uh, you know, obviously ends where the clip is cut. So uh, you can actually have some motion in the video. Like in a lot of my, you know, dumb YouTube videos I used to make, I used to have like this dramatic motion where it would pan from one end of the screen to the other. So you have like the zoom in of my face, a uh, great face I'm making there, great freeze frame. I'm just doing good at this. And then you adjust the start and then you click on the end section and you move it around. And there you go. Now you have this um, start and end section here. So as it plays, you'll see it um, will pan slightly. Now, this is kind of long here, so let's let's fix this. This is kind of a long clip. You forget sometimes that like uh, this is like a minute long clip here, so it's taking forever, so the pan is really slow. So that's a good point. If you want it to move faster, see as it's panning here, it's kind of like panning across the screen. If you want it to be a fast pan, you have to split the clip and make it a tiny clip. The, the tinier, the smaller the clip, the faster the movement will be, if that makes any sense. So in this clip here, what I did differently is now I'll use the Ken's burn aspect to like pan it from the top to the bottom. So you can move those boxes around. You got the start function at the top, uh, end function at the bottom. And then as you play it, you'll see it pans downwards, you know, so you can do different motions with it. You can make the boxes from large to small, small to large, that kind of a thing. Um, you can also do this with clips. Like when I added this clip in here before, it automatically had that Ken's burn function. Well, you can move the Ken's burn function around like I used to do dramatic funny stuff where I'd have like the meme or whatever fly across the screen as I'm talking, you know, in the same basic aspect there, the smaller that little clip, the faster it goes. So now I've got this kid running across. No, there you go. <laughs> so uh, silly, but 
uh, effective, you know, if you're wanting to make your videos pop a little bit more. Also within that box, you have the ability to like flip it upside down or flip it sideways on the right hand side you have this option to like flip the screen so if you want to you know make your viewers sick and possibly make them puke you can just have it flip which hurts my eyes just looking at but you know to each their own <laughs> you can also adjust the speed of clips too so same basic principle you have your separated clip you cut it on the front cut it on the back and then you would click on it and then in the top right hand corner you click that little uh, stopwatch looking icon there and that opens up the ability on the left hand side you can you know adjust the speed you can make it fast speed it up times two times four and so on um, and it kind of just plays really really fast and really jumpy <laughs> and then uh, you can also slow it down so you can slow down the speed of your clip and make it really slow as well click the boxes again or sorry, not the box, the, the clock, the stopwatch there, and you can adjust it to slow. Now, something that you'll notice when I play this, when I set it to slow, is it's very, like, jumpy. Once I play it, you can kind of see how it's kind of, like, very, uh, I don't know what the word is, like, jag, jaggedy, rickety, whatever. <laughs> you get the point. The reason why that's happening is because um, when you film something, uh, most like on your camera you film most of the time or you want to try and film at like 24 frames per second for natural hand movements like a natural blur when you're moving your hand and your mouth um you won't you if you're filming from like a smartphone you won't really have any control over that but most videographers when they're filming and they want to slow something down they'll intentionally film at a higher frame rate so most of the time like when i'm slowing something down i'll film at like a 60 frames per second and then if i cut if I slow the video, the footage down by like 50%, you're basically cutting down to a 30 frame per second rate. So when you slow it down, the footage is actually smoother, if that makes any sense. So for YouTube, if you're doing like YouTube videos, no one will really notice. I feel like you could get away with that. You know, if you're like doing like professional projects or whatever, um, it's definitely noticeable. It doesn't make it look very nice, but if you're doing YouTube and like with my YouTube channel, I didn't know that when I was doing that. I just was filming from a smartphone and would slow it down because it's funny. I didn't really take notice of the fact that it's kind of like almost like glitchy in a way. Like it just feels like it's missing something. That's because the frame rate was lower at a 24 frames per second and I was slowing it down, which makes it even more choppy. That's the word choppy. I was looking for the word choppy. God help me. It's too late, guys. It's too late at night for me to be doing this. All right, I don't think there's uh, much of anything else I can show you tonight. That's already like a ton of information. Um, I did not expect this video to go this long, but as I'm like getting into it and looking at stuff, I'm like realizing like there's a lot more that I could go over and show you. So hopefully this helps. Um, I know that there's way more that we could review. There's way more information we could go over. Um, but this should be enough to get you started. If you're uh, trying to get started in iMovie and you don't know how to start, this should be enough to get you rolling. I do have another video uh, where I talk about the basics of audio editing within iMovie. You should definitely check that out. That will help you too. Um, and then I am also planning on posting a video on editing uh, color within iMovie. There's not much you can do for color within iMovie, unfortunately, but you can make your video clips look uh, slightly better uh, within there as well. So um, if there is something specific that you are trying to figure out that I didn't cover, uh, comment below and let me know. Um, if And I will try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can and reply to help you even further. I'm thinking about starting a Discord where people that are stuck on stuff can come on and we can have uh, mass chats, group chats if you are stuck on something. So if you'd be interested in that, let me know and I can do that. Uh, take the time to like, share, subscribe to the channel, comment below. That really helps us uh, as I'm trying to take the time here to make more videos like this to help people. I just remember starting off on YouTube and being really frustrated when you're trying to get specific, uh, the specific answers on things and it's really difficult to find. So I'm trying uh, to get more content out there to answer those specific questions and I have no problem uh, creating a video if that's helpful, if someone's stuck on a certain subject and they need help figuring it out. So anyways, that's it. Uh, that's long enough. And yeah, I hope this helped you guys. Talk to you soon.